Hey, Dr. Travis Beasley here. Today we got something very special. We got Dr. Hoyt Jeremy from Bowringer Ingelheim taking us through a gastroscopy start to finish the way it should be. So hope you enjoy. Okay. All right. So you remember how to do that? Yes. So sir. try to pull that, catch that cartilage and pull the cartilage over. So remember they can breathe. Okay. Hang on, I gotta turn the pump on. So we can clean the boogers off and see where we are. And it's gonna tickle. Okay, in. Okay, stop. There, now we got the boogers wiped up. Well, almost. <laughs> Easy, baby. Okay, perfect. Okay, so looking at the, this is the back of the throat. Have you seen this before? No, I haven't. Okay, so we pass the scope through the nose to the back of the throat, just like if it was a stomach tube. And I'm gonna do a quick evaluation of the throat area, make sure everything looks good, and it does. Good swallow. Okay, in, slowly. Okay, in, okay, stop, drop your tin. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Okay, good, we're in. In, so now we're in the esophagus. All this looks normal so far. We actually look at this on the way out. I see. Hang on a second. Okay, in, okay, stop. The reason is, is because it's all bunched up and saliva gets all over it. When we pull it out, you'll see it actually stretches out in front of us. But you saw how white it was? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the color of our esophagus as well. When the esophagus gets to our stomach, in people, it becomes all stomach lining and when we get reflux, the acid goes from our stomach into our esophagus. Sure. That's we feel that as heartburn and GERD. Unfortunately for the horse, you can see we're actually in the stomach now, and it's still the white lining. So in the horse, that lining continues and covers the top two thirds of the horse's stomach. So if I look down, we can see the red true stomach lining. And okay. that's, not, that's nothing negative. Co there. Correct, that's not a big ulcer. That's the normal okay. stomach lining, okay. We're gonna put some more air in it and we'll look at this later. We're gonna actually pass the scope in and go look at the terminal part of the stomach, try to get in the small intestines first, and then we'll come oh, really? back and you look at this. Oh yeah, we can get into the beginning part of the small intestine. Okay. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more air in here. Make sure all this gets flat. So what's that, is that green like hay and stuff like that? Just from his last meal yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, but she was in a rock band, man. You didn't have a choice. All right, so we come back over to the right wall, in. And then now we're just going to pass the scope in. So I can keep it out of the foam, in, in. Okay, stop, so we can show. Okay. So we can see there's the scope coming in the front, and there's an opening here. That's where it's going to go, the, um, what we call the terminal part of the stomach, or the antrum. And that's where the opening to the small intestine is. So we're gonna keep going. So in, 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 in. Okay, stop. Okay, now is this normal? Like we, we took the hay away from her last night and Abby did like there's some. It, it's a little bit, but it's not ab out of the, the ordinary. Okay. Okay, but we can see some lesions here I'm gonna clean off the limb so we get a good picture and I'll show you what those are. So you see this red spot here, yep. this yep. darker red spot there, and then this area here. Yep. These two are a little bit swollen, that one's flat, 
They're not flattening out. When we look here, there's a little bit of yellowing to it. So we're gonna, when we go in closer, we're going to go and look real close at that. But these are what we're going to call uh, glandular erosions in this antrum part, this like little terminal pocket. And this is, is going to be no nope, the the opening to the intestines is right okay, here. So right when here. I, when I go back to live image, you'll see it open as a whole. That's the opening to the intestines. Okay. 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 In just a little. So how did you yeah. pause? There's a button. I just want to see this button <laughs> here. So you can pause it to get a perfect picture and take your picture, oh. so that you're not trying to take a bunch of them and hope that they're not well, blurry just, when you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> something new. Yes. You just made a bunch of people happy. Well, <laughs> I know there's a lot of things when I go and teach the first time that it's so much to, to, to yeah. get that you kind of. everything. Okay. Right? All right. So in just a little, very small amount. Looks like she's eating some pretty good hay. Okay. All right. Hold on right there. So we can see this up close view right there yep. and see that little red spot. That's actually a little bit of hemorrhage, okay? And you can see the normal surface, but we can see this irregular surface there, okay? And so that's one of them. If we go and look at this one, the same thing. If I look close at the normal mucosa, see how it looks, but then when I look at it right here, if I can get the, the light to get over the edge, put a little air in it. You can actually see the surface is a little bit deranged. It's not nice and smooth mm -hmm. like the normal surface is. Okay? It's not an ulcer, it's an inflammation. It, well, it, it, it is a surface erosion, so it's part of the ulcer complex that we talk about. Okay. So this is a gl what a glandular ulcer looks like. Okay. A glandular. Yeah, so, so the true stomach lining, all the red lining is what we call glandular. The white part is squamous. It's just a distinction of the kind. They're two separate kinds of lining. Okay. This tissue normally makes the hydrochloric acid, the stomach acid, and it, so it's not normally uh, bothered by the acid, right? Like uh, the inside of our stomach. But sometimes the, in, in locations like this where we see the tissue loses its ability to protect itself from the acid, so then the acid can damage it. In people, the most common reason that happens is taking medication like aspirin and ibuprofen, because okay. that gets rid of some of the normal protection or a bacteria called Helicobacter, which gets on the surface and disrupts the surface and eats away the protective lining. And then the a bacteria then damages the tissue, or sorry, the acid, that. the acid then damages yeah. that tissue, okay? All right, so we got an idea of what's going on here. We're gonna go in slowly. Slow, okay, keep going slowly. Right there, so we popped into, go in just a little more, Adam. okay, right there. We popped into the small intestine, and then now. You're guiding by doing this yeah, I, turn, by right. twisting it. So I can turn the tip to look in different directions, and then also if I rotate it, so if my scope is like this and I turn the tip, I'll show you when we come back out. If it's like that and I rotate the scope, see, it right. gives me a different angle. Yeah. So this is inside the duodenum. He has a little bit of feed material in there, um, but some bile as well. Yeah, we come home at like, I don't know, what was it, one in the morning or something, and I turned her loose in her stall and then Bonnie said, hey, did you get my message? And I'm like, no, what? She said, well, I didn't get all the hay out of her stall, so we were tied that, up. And that's like, all right. So, so this, it's not excessive is what the, you're saying. No, it's okay. It's enough to see everything. And we're just looking for abnormals in this area here. And, and you can almost see this little white bump here. That's the bile duct. And this brown fluid in the background is bile. And the reason there's bile in here, even though there's not a lot of food, there's a little bit of food, um, is because the horse doesn't have a gallbladder. So they don't store their bile for the food to be coming through with the next meal because horses are never in me meant to eat meals, right? right? So we can tell them how, how we already, how we manage them doesn't really work for their anatomy, right? Gotcha. So that's part of the process. When we meal feed them, their stomach fills with food and then it empties. In the wild, eating grass, it would always be full of grass. So when it empties, the fluid at the bottom, that's okay to be on the bottom, gets pushed up onto the top and the horse feels like it gets heartburn, reflux, and then when it happens enough, it'll burn it. And 
We'll come back and look at that area, but uh, going in, I saw a few little ulcers in that squamous mucosa, which would be in a person equivalent to GERD. It just happens inside the horse's stomach, so we call it stomach ulcers. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. So, like, horses that are on pasture and, Out. say, aren't ridden, so you're saying the frequency Out. of ulcers, ulcers? Very, very low in those very horses. Very low in them. Now, horses that live on pasture that are ridden, can still have ulcers because of the because, stress. Because of the stress and the things we do when we haul them, we change that environment of them eating all the time. So you're gonna keep coming out until we get into the front. There we go. All right, now we're back into the big part of the stomach, out just a little more. Okay, right there. So see, by turning the wheels, I can look in different places, but if I'm looking in a different place and I rotate, See, it also gives mm -hmm. me a different view. So that's what we're... To view of. Correct. So we're trying to get all those different... Oh, that's not all the way on. There we go. Now the air's not coming out. I just need to fill up a little bit more air here so when we rinse, we can see the whole edge. Okay, in, 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 stop. So you guys saw that crease right here? Kind of there was a crease in the wall where we get to the left wall and the greater curvature junction. That's about as far as I wanna pass the scope to get this look back. About 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters in. Okay, and then now just hold your hand here, Autumn, right at the nostril, so that if horse moves its head, you don't inadvertently push in or pull out, okay? So that we can keep that view. Because we want to look at this area first here, What's and then we'll rinse. What is That's that? the scope coming into the stomach. How are you taking a picture? I thought the scope took the picture. So, so it does, but the camera's right on the end. So the scope is passed in and we pass it around the curve of the stomach and it's looking back at itself. Oh, okay. okay. That's what I couldn't understand. So you're looking out there. You wanna come on this side and then be our flusher? Yes, so we're looking towards the front of the stomach. The, okay. the scope enters the stomach. Remember, hold it right there so that it doesn't blow off. Nope. Oh. Nope. Hang on, uh, we lost a bunch of air. Come back out, cause, and it fell down. We put some more air in. So you see that crease? See here? That's the left wall, the greater curvature. Mm -hmm. Usually when you get to that crease and you turn back, it's going to be about 30 to 35 centimeters. Go in. If you try to go further and get closer, that's good. Oh, a little bit more maybe. Right there. Good. Flush. And push pretty hard. There you go. Keep flushing. Okay, that's good. So you see that red spot here, these red spots here, we'll look at them close up, but those are squamous ulcers. Okay. okay. All right, flush again, pretty hard, as hard as you can. There you go. Okay, that's good. Okay. So we can see all along there, we see some small ulceration. All these little spots are this, little this ulcer. This one right yeah. here is not. The, where that's it goes the, up, no, that's a scallop of where the junction of this lining and that lining start, come together. Right, okay. okay. So we looked at it on the way in, that we, that's what you were talking right. about. Right, okay, out. So once I do that, we're gonna pull this up slowly and keeping that view out, stop. So you can see that's normal tissue coming up, but then you can see the defect here, here, mm -hmm. here. I do. I do. Clean off that lens again. There we go. So will these, without attention, will these get worse? Get worse. They will get worse and get bigger. And mm -hmm. and um, now, when horses pull out just a little more, okay, flush. Okay, stop. Right yeah, exactly. Yep. And you can see over here too. 
here, mm -hmm. here, yeah. all these little ones. Now it's magnified some. Remember we looked at the size of the scope on the way in. Okay, so, so these are smaller than the scope, obviously. But what we know in horses is that the size of the wound does not correlate to any negative impact it has on the horse. Okay. So even Let's small ulcer. The so size. the size of the wound, the size of the ulcer, doesn't have a correlation to the severity of the clinical sign. They can sign. be small and, they can still be cause and still cause a lot of problems. Right. It's an individual horse thing. Yes, I understand. Okay. All right. Flush. Keep flushing. Now you're going to have to flush it. Let's get, you can use the other one, and then you'll flush pretty hard to get that mucus off of there. Ready? Yep, go ahead and flush. Okay, good, that's good, stop. So now we're going to look at the left wall after we got it all flushed, coming around. That actually looks I mean, it, pretty good. It seems good. to be at it's the nice juncture more than... Well, so, so because... As the acid rises, that's the first part it's going to touch, okay. right? So, the, and over here, you can see it's already the little bit of fluid we put in, it's the closest it's going to be, right? So, mm -hmm. when the stomach collapses, that's the first part that gets the acid on it. I understand. Okay. There is some islands. Let's go in and look at that closely. So, make sure um, in a little, a little more. Keep going in. Okay, stop. There we go. So that's normal tissue and not an ulcer. Sometimes horses will have the squamous mucosa surrounds a little bit of glandular mucosa. And we just call it an island of glandular mucosa. Okay, so no, it's, that's, not that's not an ulcer. Right. Okay, out. So far, you haven't seen any major ulcers. Well, I not, understand. Not, severe, that the not small from a severity. Still... Correct. And we will grade the, the squamous mucosa out a little more. Right there, flush. Okay, that's good, stop. Out some more. So now this is looking at, I can get the scoop to rotate so that up is up and down is down. This is the back wall of the stomach. That was the left wall, so we're facing. That's why it's on the right side of the mm -hmm. screen because we're facing the horse. So now we've come around and we're looking at the the back wall, we're going to flush this area here, flush. Make sure nothing's hiding under there. Okay, First stop. What can do there. I'll just take some pictures of these normal areas. A little bit hyperemia or redness say, right that there. That, to... That's where the scope passed. Oh, okay. It wasn't there on the way in. I okay. looked for that. And so, um, and then we'll take a look at this left wall, take a picture of it. Okay. Now keep coming out a little. We're going to rinse this right wall as we come out some. Hang on. Out some more. Okay, stop right there. Okay, flush. Whoops. Hang on, stop. It pulled into the uh, esophagus a little bit, so go in just a little right, right there. So flush. Okay, stop. Clear that off, and the right wall looks pretty good. And then as we keep coming around, now we're looking straight down. Flush just a little. We'll run some fluid over that edge a little more. That's good. And so we can see, stop. These are the lesions that we saw from straight on, looking straight down at that tissue. Okay. So that's just an up-close view of that of that wound right there, okay? And we're losing a little air because he pushes the air out around, so that's why the fluid level's coming up some. And then we're gonna look at the top of the stomach. Go in just a little. Okay, the top of the stomach. All looks good. Okay, in a little more, I'll take this. Now we'll take the air out. You want to turn that on for us? And as you can see, pull the scope out just a little. See, we're collapsing the stomach. It collapses side to side, and all that fluid at the bottom is now going to come up onto the squamous. That's good. Turn it off. Come on the squamous mucosa. If it happens once from this exam, it's not a problem. Okay, so we know we can fast the horse, and it's really not going to damage him to what we see. 
But if that happens every day when we feed the horse a big meal and then we don't feed them anything for several hours and then we come back in the evening and feed them again, during the day their stomach collapsed, even though the horse's stomach doesn't have any food in it, it makes acid all the time, unlike mm -hmm. us. Okay. So all that acid that's sitting on the bottom, it has nowhere to go if it's collapsed because it's just squished like a bag, take a plastic bag full of water and you have the water at the bottom, but then you squeeze it, where does it go? Up the sides and then it'll go up the sides and touch the squamous mucosa and then it just burns it, okay? All right, so now we're gonna pull out into the esophagus, okay, a little more there and then now keep coming out okay and you can see how it stretches out nice in front of us as we come out we're looking for any lesions here in adult horses it's extremely rare to have lesions in the esophagus because they really don't reflux in foals they can I've scoped over 5,000 horses and I've only diagnosed four adult horses with lesions in their esophagus okay Okay, so hang on right there. We'll take a picture of that just to show we were in the esophagus. Keep coming back, out. And then um, Autumn, when you feel it, here's another little technique trick, stop. Okay, while it's still in the pharynx, so you stop once it comes right back in, reach all the way up to the nostril with this hand. Keep that hand on the horse's nose like you are. And now pull the rest of it all the way out with one smooth motion. And what that does is, you can see when we're pulling it out, we stop and re-grab and pull out, stop and re-grab. Sometimes when we get to the end, when we pull out, remember it's on top of the epiglottis and, and the glottis, so it has to fall onto the soft palate. Well, that's usually if you have a horse that throws its head, that's why it throws its head is because that comes out, it hits the soft palate. If we stop just at the right place where the tip of the scope is under the ethmoids, because we reached out and the tip's here and the horse does this and the scope goes up and hits the ethmoids, it can make the horse's nose bleed all the way at the end of this procedure. If we stop right when it comes out still in the pharynx, if it hits and the horse does this, it's only gonna go up and hit the, the, top, the roof of the pharynx, right. which isn't gonna bleed. And then we reach up and then pull the whole rest of the way out so we never stop with the tip underneath the ethmoids. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So the exam's done. And then um, we'll set up the cleaning stuff. Yes.